Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 13. Today is our lesson number 13. It should say, it should say 3013. The first digit 3 represents the fact that it is from the third edition. The same exact problem that we are about to do, the same exact problem that we are about to do appeared in the first and the second edition. And if you are interested in watching the same problem being solved at a much slower pace, you are welcome to watch the original series and you will find the solutions to all the problems that we are about to do from day number 42 through 45. Just type in GRE Math Day 42. So, prob first problem, we are on page number 162. Please turn to it. You must have the book in front of you. Turn to page one 162 and you'll see problem number 7 there where a chart is given to us, a graph is given to us. Instead of simply uh, putting the graph arbitrarily, I, I, I gave you the points here so you and I I'm going to put the graph together before we worry about what is being asked. So let's, let's, do it to, let's do it together, shall we? So, we're going to go up to 3 on x, we're going to go up to negative 3, so here we go. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and the y is going to go uh, up to 2 maybe. 1 and 2, and 1, and 2. Let's get going, shall we? So we have negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2, it's going to be way up here. Oh, negative 3, negative 2. Shoot. I lost it. Negative 3, negative 2. Then we have negative 2 and 0. Negative 2 and 0. Then we have negative 1 and positive 2. Way up there. This thing that looks nothing like... Oh, it, it does look like that. Okay, never mind. Then we have 0 and positive 1. X is 0. Uh, positive 0 and positive 1. Then we have 1 and 0, then we have 2 and 1, 2 and 1, and then we have 3 and 1. Let's join them together. As a matter of fact, by the time, by the time I gave you the coordinates of these points on the blackboard like that, we could have answered the question very easily. But this is what is given to us. And the question is, what is the value of f of f of f of negative one? Let's put this in a bigger bracket. Well, let's answer it, shall we? Before we worry about the outside part, let's first figure out what f of what f of negative one is. F of negative one. Well, negative one is right here, and the value is the value of y is three. Right here, we can see negative one, three or two, rather two right here. When x is negative 1, y is 2. So that's the value of this guy, positive 2. So we have this value now. We can put it back in this substitute here. And now we look for f of positive 2. When x is 2. When x is 2, y is positive 1. When x is 2, y is positive 1. So that's it. That's your answer. And that is, that is the value of f of f of negative 1, which is positive 1. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's do the next one. Some of these questions are just you know, make you, makes you wonder why they are there. They are there because some people have trouble with it. Which statement describes the D in terms of N? Question number eight. We are on page number 161, 162. And we've given d minus 3n over 7n minus d, we are told equals 1. And we're being asked to figure out d in terms of n. d in terms of n. In other words, we have to solve this equation for d. So let's do that. Let's multiply, let's multiply both sides of the equation. Let's multiply this side. Let's multiply both sides of the equation. Y. I left no room there. I'm just going to erase this thing. And let's do it in a different color. 
We're going to multiply both. This is a baby step. I shouldn't have to show this to you, but I'm going to show you anyway. Multiply both of the equation by 7n minus d. In other words, bring this thing over there. And now this goes away, and we are left with d minus 3n equals 7. If I have to explain this, this step here that I just did to somebody, it does make me worry as to what that person is going to do on the GRE. This is too simple. This is too simple, obviously. We want, to, we want to isolate the D. We want to solve for D. So let's bring D on this side and N on the other side. Let's, let's bring this D on this side by adding D to both sides. And let's bring N to the other side by adding 3N to both sides. That's it. We're done. Negative 3N. <coughs> negative 3n and a positive 3n are going to cancel each other out, that was the whole point and negative d and a positive d is going to cancel out each other and we are almost done we have here d plus d which is 2d equals 10n and we don't, we are not interested in 2d's, we just want a d by itself to divide both sides by 2 and as I divide both sides by 2, I better fix this thing before my algebra teacher finds out that I was sloppy and therefore d would equal, this 2 goes away, 5n, there you go, 5n. And anything that tells us that answer is what we're looking for. As, you, as we look at the answer choices, it says d is 4 less than n. That is not what we saw here. What we see here is d is 5 times n. And the answer choice is e. Answer is e. I'm not going to read all the wrong answers. Answer is e. Answer choice e says, D is 5 times n, which is exactly what we have here. D is 5 times n. Let's do the next one. Problem number 9. And problem number 9 is a, is a mixture problem. We have two mixtures, uh, we have two solutions of different concentration and we're going to mix them together. We are told that we have 3 grams of R and 7 gram of solution S. We are going to mix them, to mix them together. We have, and we are told, I left out something very important. And R we are told, R, R we are told is 8% concentration and S we are told is 18% concentration. And we're going to mix them together. We're going to mix them together. Obviously, it's 30 gram and 7 gram. We're going to have 10 grams at the end. The question is, what is the concentration level of the final mixture? How strong is the final mixture? So, think whatever you like. Think in terms of alcohol if you like. Uh, this drink that you have here has 8% alcohol. This drink has 18% alcohol. If you take one bottle of each, when I say bottle, bottle being a unit, obviously bottle has to be the same size. So one liter of this and one liter of that, and you mix them together. What's the, what's the, how strong is the final drink? What's the concentration of the final drink? Hey, no, we are not going to mix mixing one liter and one liter. Sorry, I take it back. We'll do three liters and ten liters in my example, not one and one. What would be the concentration if it were one and one? If they are equal number of concentration, instead of instead of three and seven, if we had the same same amount let's say 3 and 3, what would be the concentration then? In that case, the concentration would simply be the average of these two numbers. 8 plus 18 divided by 2, because we have 3 of this and we have 3 of this. They have the same weights. In which case the answer is very simple. 8 and 18, 8 plus 18, uh, 10 plus 18 would have been 28, so it's 26 divided by 2, which is 13%. That's the case. That is the case when they had equal amount, but we do not have equal amount. Keep listening. We do not have equal amount. This is the case, the, the answer of the concentration would have been 13% if we had equal amount. We do not have equal amount. We have more of which one? We have more of the stronger one or the, more of the weaker one? We have 7 gram of S. Just give me one second. I want to make sure. 7 gram of S. And S is... By weight, the liquid A is 8% and 18% of S. We have 7 gram of S. There we go. Since we have more of the stronger one, 
our final concentration is, is going to be something more than 13. Our final concentration, whatever it is, is going to be something more than 13. Any answer choice that you see that says 13 or less is the wrong answer. Let's take, let's take a look at the answer choices. A, B, C, D, E. Ten, thirteen, fifteen. Oh, this is too silly. This question is just too silly. Some time ago, I don't remember which which day it was. Uh, no, it wasn't the last one. I'm looking at the last one. Sorry, just give me one second here. Maybe it was the last one. Twelve? No, it wasn't twelve. It wasn't twelve. Yes, day eleven. Day eleven. Not the last video. But the video before that, listen very carefully, in the video before that, we did a work time problem. You must watch these videos in, the proper, in, in, the, in its proper sequence, so that I can take liberties, I can assume that you have done the previous work. If you watch day 11, listen very carefully, if you watch the day 11, you will, you, you will see that we did a work time problem, where the answer choices were given to us, and when we looked at the answer choices in a rational manner, in a logical manner, we, we found out that four of the five answer choices was simply not making any sense. Well, if the four of the five, four of the five answer choices are not making any sense, work is done. You already know what the answer is. You don't have to solve the bloody thing. We don't have to solve this problem also. I just realized it. We don't have to solve it. Because we already established the final concentration is going to be more than 13%. It's going to be more than 30% because we don't have 3 and 3. We have 3 and 7. This 18% one, we have 7 of it here. We have, we have more of the stronger one. We have the more of the stronger one and less of the weaker one. So the final concentration, whatever it is, is going to be more than 13. It cannot be 13 because we are using more for every three parts of the weak one. We are using seven parts of the stronger one, so it pulls the average up. Final concentration, final concentration cannot be 13 or less than 13. It has to be more than 13. We can cross out A and B. Similarly, similarly, the final concentration of the solution, whatever it is, can never ever be stronger than the strongest solution in the liquid. Now I use the I use the superlative strongest, even though we only have two. I should have said stronger. I use the, I use the term strongest on purpose to emphasize the fact that even if we had four or five or ten solutions, ten ten mixtures that you're putting in a mixture, ten different liquid you're putting in a mixture, it doesn't matter what each concentration of each of those liquid is. The final concentration can never ever be stronger than the strongest liquid. Just like, just like you take, if you take the exam, if I take four exams and my scores, whatever the scores are, 63, 65, 77, 78, my average score cannot be more than 78. That's the highest one I got. And my average score on the four exam cannot be lower than my lowest score. In other words, final concentration, whatever it is, cannot be below, cannot be below 8%. We don't have anything below 8%. We have 10 and 13. That's not the reason why we crossed out A and C. We crossed out this and this for, for a different reason, which is right here. But final concentration also cannot be more than 18. It cannot be D or E. The answer is 15. Now why did we cross out 13? We crossed out 13 because we realized that if we had equal amount, if we had equal amount, in which case, the final question would have been a simple, in, in that case, the final question concentration would have been a simple average. Simple average of 8 and 18 is 13. We have to take a weighted average, just like here. This is the right word. This is what we have to do. This is the weighted average. We have 3 parts of 8% and we have 18 parts of, or rather, and 7 parts of 18. Let's find out, shall we? 3 parts of 8 is 24. And 18 times 7, well, I don't know what 18 times 7 is. Uh, 7, 7 is a 49. So 49 plus 7 is 56. 6 plus 7 and 5 is 12. Oh, well, what do you know? 126 and, a 20, and, a, a, and one, 126 and 24 is 150. It should not say over 2. It was over 2 before because I was talking about th that's wrong. It was 2 before because we had, even, even in that case, when I had 3 and 3, it should have been 6 here. 3 parts of this and 3 parts of that, that should have been 6. I was wrong. 3 parts of this and 3 parts of that, even in that case, it should have been 6 because we had 6 parts. Here we have three parts of this and seven parts of that. So the total number of parts we have is ten. Ten parts total. It's a weighted average. And you divide by the weights, three of this and seven of that. So the, you divide three and seven. So 150 divided by 10, 150 divided by 10 is what we have here, 15. 
15 is the answer. Let's go to the next one, number 10. Number 10. And as I keep reminding you, if you don't like this, uh, this, uh, this, the way I'm doing it here, that you feel that I'm brushing something off, uh, watch the ones, original ones, where essentially what we, what I did there in four videos is what we're doing in one video, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Next problem, number 10. We are told that we have 700 people. We are told of which, of which, 120 are lawyers. Out of those 700 people in the room, 120 are lawyers. We are going to pick two, pick two at random. We are going to pick two at random. Question is, what are the approximate odds, what are the approximate odds, approximately, what are the odds, that the two picked are not lawyers. What are the approximate odds that the two people that we pick are not lawyers, given the fact that there are 700 of them in the room, 700 people that is not lawyers, 700 people in the room, of whom 120 are lawyers. Keep in mind, we are looking for the approximate answer. We don't have to waste our time doing the precise calculation. So let's do that, okay? What do you suppose the odds are of picking the first person who is not a lawyer? Well, before we answer that question, we have to first figure out how many people in the room are not lawyers. Well, we have 700 of them, of which, of whom rather, uh, 120 are lawyers. So let's subtract the two. 0, 10 minus 2 is 8, and 6 minus 1 is going to be 580. So 580 people are not lawyers out of 700. So if I were to pick one person at random, the first person, the odds are 580 out of 700 that the first person that we picked is not a lawyer. Let's pick one more. By the time you want to pick the second one, we no longer have 580 people in the room who are not a lawyer because we already picked one. We only have 579 left. Out of how many? We already picked one person. This is without replacement. They don't say it, but it's assumed that it's without the replacement. We're going to pick the person and not push him back in the room. It's already picked. It's chosen. Those are the odds. That's it. We're done. And they're looking for the approximate answer. Since they're looking for the approximate answer, that's what we're going to do. So let's start the process, shall we? We're going to pretend that 580 is approximately 600. And the bottom is 700. Same thing here, we're going to pretend 579 is approximately 600 and the bottom is 700. It's not 700, but we're going to approximate 699 as 700. Do it, let's do it on the top. Let's do the work on the top. So what are we left with? Well, it's very straightforward, very simple. Divide top and bottom by, by 100 here. Divide top and bottom by 100 here. And what we are left here is 6 times 7 over 6 times 7. On the top we are going to get 36. On the top we are going to get 36. On the bottom we are going to get 49. Which we are going to again approximate. We are going to again approximate as 36 over 50. 36 over 50. Multiply top and bottom by 2. We multiply top and bottom by 2 because we want 100 at the bottom so that we can have the percentage is 72 over 100 or 72 percent. In the book, as you look at the answer choices, the answer is C. They have 70 percent. They have 70 percent because when they were doing approximation here, we approximately 49 as 50 and they approximated 36 as 35. They approximate 30, 36 as 35 and they have a 70 here. 70% approximately and that's all and that's all we have for today tomorrow we start we'll start with the 
problems that you see on the next page. And gradually, 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 we'll keep making progress. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.